Welcome back. This here in front of me is the 2022 version of the ROG Strix G. It is a AMD Ryzen 7 powered device. It, it runs the 6800H and it is coupled with uh, 3070 Ti inside of the device so it's quite powerful and can drive a lot of things for you and let you play at amazing rates okay so the main things that I liked about this particular model is all the design decisions that went into the production of this uh, machine you know the diagonal design language that they've been using for a few years now has been updated it carries over to the lid which now has an ROGI that only has the perimeter lit up so I don't know why it's not lighting up it's supposed to but as you can see there's the continuation of the design and there's also a subtle hint of a g right there i'm pretty sure you can see that let's put it right side up so you can see it better there we go that's the g for strix g and then this cover plate uh on the scar models this can be replaced but on the strix g when you get yours it's gonna be the one that you're stuck with this is the design that comes with the eclipse gray version and it's like uh something that jackson pollock would have made you know uh paint splatter using a toothbrush approach there and as you can see this cut out here at the very bottom it allows for the user to monitor what's happening on the computer even if it's closed because sometimes well you have to keep it closed now most of the ports for connectivity can be found at the back and here we have two usb-c ports one with power delivery an hdmi port and a lan cable port as well as the vc in and you want to keep this on power because it affects the entire system performance uh even even the mouse track the on the mouse pad it reacts differently when it is under power all right at the bottom we have a really prominent green here on the on one of the feet it says back on top with the ROGI on it as well and then as you can see the perforations are not even these mean something or they pertain to something we have the uh, bottom firing speakers here and the perimeter lighting here at the bottom oh on the other foot it says for those who dare yeah so as you can see uh even when you're walking around carrying this with you whatever orientation it may maybe like maybe you're carrying it like that or like this people will know absolutely that you mean business especially during gameplay and you will smoke them with this device the screen is a 300 hertz 3 millisecond display response time uh, let me just lower the yeah, so you can see so my capture will not do it justice but this movement is 10 times faster on my end right now because well it's just how fast it is now the strix g features a mux switch which toggles between igpu and the discrete one this is it the one on m4 
doesn't say Max, but it there's a there's a fan fan emblem there which toggles between silent mode igpu and performance mode for the discrete graphics now that we're on performance mode let's try a render here because uh i am an architect and i do play but not that often lately and so if i did go out and buy this it will be specifically to use it for this purpose and what i really like about when there's a new unit that we're using is that i can do all the compilations here that means that uh, i don't know if you can see it here but this file that we just opened right now is uh, 310 mb so that's a lot a lot of uh, megabytes to be processing for uh, a computer that might have already been filled up by uh, miscellaneous things and so when there's a new one like this we can do we can make sure that when we do the compilations here it will function perform very well so because this program is a bit sensitive to changes in the gpu and uh, we're keeping it at the discrete right now we're gonna activate a render and we'll see just how fast the ryzen 7 6800h performs and it is quite phenomenal actually i would love to have this on along with the others uh, in the office for rendering because it is quite fast and uh, just opening opening the file alone took just a few seconds on the one i'm using now that will be maybe two minutes or something so just let that uh, figure itself out while we look at the keyboard deck which has a per, per key lighting as you can see the right side here has uh, media controls that complement these ones here so the difference is that these five programmable buttons already has the volume on it and then the other media keys are here whereas on other devices the volumes will be here along the function keys so as you can see it has started to figure out the space and because this is a hyper-threaded machine let's try to bring up the uh, task manager so we can see the activity of all the cores that are working right now so you can see it's eating up all the memory there it's like 5 gb running and all the cores are engaged and running so this is like a typical way that we use the device uh, we do uh, a lot of waiting for renders to finish to complete and depending on the size of the image it might take a little bit longer time than this but this is running it at a record pace really Okay, let's see actually how much time that took because we can call it up here. Where are the. There we go. Yep, I want to see this. Copy the stamp. So it just did that. This is a full HD render, 
10 EPP at a minute and 20 seconds. So let's try increasing it to a 4K image and see just how much longer that will take. As you can see also, uh, and this is important for other professionals and actually students to understand. As you can see right now, we're rendering with only the CPU power. The GPUs are doing nothing. So what they say when they tell you that you, you absolutely need a discrete device for uh, to work with things like this, it's generally not true. It was true before, but now even integrated graphics uh, work well and you should be able to perform the same thing on that. We just really would like the additional power of the GPU if we're doing a, uh, an interactive or real-time render, which we can also do here actually, but it's not currently set up for it. We, we can try it just to see just how much it taxes the GPU. We'll just let this finish and then we'll go to that one afterwards. The final render time for this one is 4 minutes 40. So that's, there is a little bit of change there because it was 120 earlier. So the estimate would have been like 520. So this is 440, which is uh, okay. It's quite okay. Let's bump up the brightness for you there. Progressive rendering. And as you can see, the noise limit. Oh, you can't see. All right. As you can see here, the noise limit has changed. We have now check progressive render and then you know we don't need it to be interactive we just want it to be progressive so what's gonna happen is it will make it finer over time it will still be using the gpu and but a different method than earlier i forgot to tick that box okay let's run it once more So this one, uh, the progressive render, I like doing this, especially when you're trying to do a lot of scenes and you're going for stills because it allow, it shows you the scene completed really fast and then it will just refine and refine over the course of some time. We should be seeing it here in a short while. So in a nutshell, that is how the GPU contributes in the development of uh, graphics in the 3D industry like this one, or the architecture industry. And we did this also on the Studio Book line, and we'll probably use the same model for other lines as well. In the future, no. So it's slowly becoming clearer here at the center. So you can see the pass has moved to 128. You can barely see it now happening, like unlike earlier. So really, at any point in time, like maybe. Uh, you're pressed for time, you need to move on to the next one. You can just stop it like I'm going to do now. So you're going to just stop it. And then it will bake the render in. So this one right now is at 5 minutes and 56 seconds. The CPU was a little bit faster. Uh, clocking at 4 minutes and... 40 
seconds, I think that was. So both of them has pros and cons, and it's not uh, it's not one it's not a collective. They don't work that way. They work in tandem somewhat, but not really. So I hope that clarifies something for all of you uh, students out there and some of the professionals that are working here also. And if you're trying to get a new computer for yourself, this is a prime recommendation. It is uh, the Ryzen Core, the Ryzen 7 chips uh, are really good as you can see with the actual test that we have performed earlier and then also to be coupled with the 3070 pi that is uh, you, you really don't need to carry anything else and you can uh, work and play at the same time so yeah that has been Oh, did you see that? It was lit up. That has been the 2022 Strix G with the gadget shelf on the gadget shelf for this round. Thank you guys and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.